Are you looking for a powerful build for your Korra? After the update whispers in the wall, you are in the right place. Let's do some broken build. As always, we take friendly approach for Thanos doesn't know anything about Korra, starting with the passive. The passive you will have a Kavat called the Vinari. It will boost your movement speed by 15% and if it dies, it will revive itself after 45 seconds. First ability called 50 shades of grey, I mean a whip uh, claw, this is your DPS carry and what makes uh, Korra S tier when it comes to damage and KPM and it have an augment called uh, accumulating whip claw, you hit with your whip and you're gonna be having 35% stacking damage on each hit, now Korra whip claw is affected as well with melee weapons, that's why we use statistics for her and that's why we use statistic Rivens to boost the damage, but it's affected by certain mods uh, for the melee weapon. Not all the mods works on your melee weapon to boost your whip claw, and we're gonna get to that when we reach the statistic build. Second ability called Ensnare. This is your CC. You throw it at one enemy, and it will chain all enemies and lock them down. Now, when you hit them with whip claw, the chain will refresh and bring more enemies to be chained. Now you need to know there is a synergy about ensnared that when enemies in ensnared and you hit them with whip claw he will receive 200% more damage from you and your cat binari. Now you need to know ensnared doesn't have any augment as well. Moving to the next ability. Third ability called the Vinari. It allows you to control your passive uh, Kavat Vinari by three mods. Attacking specific target or protect by knocking and disarming enemies or heal the lowest uh, member of the squad now removing vinari with any other helmet ability it doesn't mean your vinari will not spawn you will still be able to mod it and will boost you with 15 percent movement speed and will respawn itself but vinari ability it's not so good that's why we remove it because other abilities in Korra are very very important to just uh, uh, like change them with other helmet ability come with an augment called vinari bodyguard if Korra dies vinari will die instead but the timer will be increased from 45 second respawn to 150 seconds. But killing enemies will decrease the time by 4 seconds. Fourth ability is called the Strangle Dome. This ability is very, very powerful. I will explain to you why. First of all, you can put two Strangle Domes, okay? And they're affected by ability range. They will grab enemies on the area and they ragdoll them on the air. If you cast on Ensnare on any of those enemies, you will bring more inside your cage. Enemies uh, are strangled that will have 200% uh, damage taken from all your abilities and weapons except Whip Claw. Whip Claw will have only 100% damage to them and all the enemies that strangle will take 50% damage from Whip Claw. Meaning when you Whip Claw, the enemy that you're gonna whip, he will take 100%. The rest on the Strangle Dome, they will take only half of the damage and this ability have an Ogmon called uh, Pilfering uh, Strangle Dome. It will uh, give you 65% uh, chance of dropping additional loot. Now, it makes her uh, compete head-to-head uh, -head, uh, with Necros. This is what makes uh, Korra more S tier plus plus plus. You learned about Korra, now it's time for the build. Starting with the Archon Shards. You want to have five Violet Archon Shards, and hopefully in your case, they are Tau Force. It's worth it 100%. Put them, Hank Payne guarantees. Now, why Violet, not Red? The Violet will give you 25% critical damage, the same as Red, but the Violet is superior with its feature. Energy when, when energy is over 500, the damage boost is double. The Red doesn't have it. Now you'd say, why you have Red, I care? Because the buyer resource failed me. And now, let's talk mods and helmet ability and synergies. Steel Charger is gonna be 60% melee damage increase, and it will help your whip glow. Premature footed to resist knockdown. You don't want to spend time in the cold below. It's not good for your butt. It's really cold and it's winter. Do it in the summer. Stretch 45% uh, ability range. Accumulating whip glow 35% damage. Stacking to 350%. Primate flow for energy max to activate the feature in your Archon Viola Chard. Primate continuity for duration adaptation to adapt to the incoming damage for more tankiness. Uh, equilibrium health pickup will give you energy and energy pickups will give you health. Arcane Energize doesn't care about the Equilibrium shenanigans, so it will work just fine. Ogre Reach for ability range and energy spent on abilities will be converted to shields. Umbral Intensify for strength instead of Rolling Guard, uh, sorry, instead of Trans Fortitude for strength and minus duration or the Blind Rage for strength and minus efficiency. 
intensify best in slot. Now, let's talk about Arcanes. Arcane Energize is best in slot, Arcane Fury is best in slot, but if you want to play things around, you can switch Arcane Energize with Arcane Avenger or Malta Ogmonta or the Fury. That's on you, okay? The Steel Charge, if you don't like it and you put Arcane Avenger, you can always uh, switch to Combat uh, Discipline, so you damage yourself to keep the Avenger always active. For the Helmet ability, we're going to be using Nourish to proc Viral on our Whip Claw, and it's going to give us uh, the Energy Multiplier. Now, you're going to be fine. Now, some things I would consider changing here and there if you really want to. Now, for example, if you're going to a uh, looting mission with a team, and you're going, for example, uh, in an Endurance Steel Path, and you feel the life support is not good enough, Pilifering Strangle Dome will fix that for you instead of Intensify, okay? Or you want to switch it with Reach. That's totally up to you. I don't recommend Reach. I recommend Intensify, and the rest is on you. Okay, let's talk about uh, the stat stick. None other than the Ceramic Dagger, my favorite uh, stat stick. Of course, you can go with the Incarnate Magister as well. And if you don't have neither the Ceramic Dagger or the Magister, you can go for the Amphis or the uh, Zhao Sword. They are very, very solid and very powerful as well. For the evolution on the Ceramic Dagger, we're going to be using Evolution 2, uh, the Gun and Blade. Plus one initial combo stacks up to 100 times. This will allow you to get rid of Naramon and you can switch it to Unairo or Madurai. Now, we have here Evolution 3 for 20 initial combo, Evolution 4 for increased critical chance by 30%, and this is why Ceramic Dagger is my favorite. When it comes to modding, we're going to be running a Stinging Thorn, a Gradiator Might, Spoiled Strike, Organ Shatter, Blood Rush, Primate Pressure Point, Whipping Wound, and Primate Fever Strike, and Sacrificial Steel. We're going to go for Toxin, as Whipping Claw will already proc Slash, Puncture, and Impact, and this weapon will boost it, of course, and Toxin on this weapon. Now, we have Viral from Nourish, we have Toxin on the Ceramic Dagger, and we have Corrosive from Melee Exposure. On ability, cast 30% Corrosive damage on Melee Strikes for 25 seconds, stacks up to 240%. So, Corrosive, Slash, Puncture, Impact, and Toxin, and Viral, all of them on one enemy. Let's move now to the Vinari build. There you go, Fetch, Bite, uh, Link Vitality, the reason we're using Bite for Tenacious Bond to be active as well, the rest uh, you're familiar uh, with. Now, moving to the uh, Sedo. Sedo will be a viral uh, proking for the stacks of viral on enemies, and you can use it when you are proking your uh, Whip Claw as well. Okukuru will be there for a backup, but here you go, this is the build. And now, let's talk about the companion you're going to be using. Now, of course, most of the situations you're going to be using the Lucky, which is a Smita Kavat to boost your uh, loot, of course, and gives you critical chance here and there. Or you're going to be using Nautilus, which is my favorite. And why Nautilus? Nautilus because the cordon, it will bring enemies in for your... Uh, the Strangle Dome will bring them up, or you're going to be whipping, uh, clawing them if the Strangle Dome is too full uh, of enemies. Manifold will be sure the Cordon will be cast as many times as possible, and you need to put the mods in this uh, order. Tenacious Bond for critical damage as well. It doesn't stack, of course, with the Vinari, but it is there in case you flip things around, and even for other Warframe. Vigilante Fervor, uh, there you go, Armand's Offense Supplies for your primary, and yeah. And how exactly you play Korra? Very simple. You want to keep Nourish active all the time. You want to cast two Strangle Dome always. And be sure to ensnare those enemies. And just... Ta-da! Simple as that. Boom. Everything will die in your way. There is nothing can survive a whip from uh, Korra at this time. Look at that. Nothing will survive. Speaking about nothing will survive, let's go to Steel Path. And here we are on Steel Path. There is something you need to understand about Korra. And if you do understand it, you're going to be a very, very powerful Korra player. She's not a tank. So don't start running around acting like you can bully those uh, enemies. Because you will die. That's uh, first of all. Second of all, always keep your ensnare active on enemies and on the Acolyte when he spawns. Okay, here is the Acolyte. All you want to do is target him and ensnare him. And when he's ensnared, he just gets one shot like that. And you will treat the same Acolyte every single time in the same way. Okay? Simple as that. Other than that, it's just finding a room, casting a couple of Strangled Dome, Nourish active, ensnare on, and slap every enemy 
in existence like this just don't treat her like a tank that's the only mistake i see a lot of players uh, dealing with Cora and end up uh, dying boom 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 hit 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 and then go outside take the loot come back in simple as that and by this we come to an end to our video i really hope you enjoy uh, this uh, and you may learn a couple of things if you do please uh, don't forget to let me know in the comments below what you think about this build and what you think about Cora. and uh, don't forget to sub comment a like if you want to join our uh, content we have a link on the description about our discord that's how you join our community thank you guys so much for watching uh, stay safe and i see you next time oh.